Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. Welcome to your fifth lecture for this subject. This is 562, Pharmacology of Drug Affecting the Central Nervous System. So for this week, we will cover the topics of reticular activation system. So before we start, of course, you need to know the learning objective for this particular topic. So I divided this lecture into four videos. The first videos, we will, uh, you need, at the end of the video, you need to able to discuss the reticular formation and its nuclei and the functional division of reticular formations. And the second video, you need to describe the arousal state, sleep stages, as well as the sleep cycles. At the end of the third video, you need to describe the neurological regulation of sleep wake switch. And the last video, you need to be able to relate the sleep wake switch and the circadian pacemaker with the homeostatic control of sleep. So, what is a reticular formation is all about? As you can see in this picture, so I can say that reticular formation is a set of interconnected nuclei that are located through this brain stem. As you can see, the brain Brainstem uh, consists of midbrain, pons, and medulla, and it will be connected to the encephalon. When uh, I mentioned that the encephalon is referring to the thalamus and hypothalamus before it communicated to the other parts of the brain. So, this is all about the reticular formations. So, as you can see in this picture, the reticular formation itself consists of many cells group as stated here and is situated among large number of fiber bundles. That is why we call it reticular formation. Based on the region of its histological appearance which can be described as a reticular network of fibers as well as T cells. The reticular formation is home to several group of cells or nuclei that produce neurotransmitters that connected throughout all areas of the brain. The yellow color here is the basal forebrain, which contain nucleus basalis of maiden that produce a large number of acetylcholine beside that pediculopantin nucleus here, as well as the lateral tegmental nucleus that you can be found in the midbrain of reticular formation. This is also another larger site of acetylcholine production in the brain. One of the largest dopamine producing areas in the brain is the ventral tegmental area, VTA. This is the red color that can be found also in the midbrain of the reticular formations. The locus corollus, the blue color here, is the largest collection of noradrenergic neurons in the brain. The primary size of serotonin release in the brain is the rough nuclei, which is the green color nuclei are found near the midline of the brainstem in the reticular formations. All these neurotransmitters that are produced in all of these areas will be sent throughout the central nervous system to modulate the sensory perceptions, motor activity and your behavioral responses. So not only that, as you can see in this picture, all of these nuclei and other cells in the reticular formation also form circuits with motor nuclei of the cranial nerve. This means that they are responsible for motor movement in the face and head as well as motor movement related to autonomic function of the visceral organ, such as lung uh, for our respirations, for heart for our maintaining the blood pressure as well as for our GI system that is responsible for swallowing and also the vomiting process. Because of that, reticular formations play a major role in maintaining the normal state of consciousness through its connection with cerebral cortex by way of ascending reticular activating system. Not only that, it also can regulate the respirations, heart rate, blood pressure and other vegetative functions through the autonomic reflex that present within this brainstem. Okay, as you can see here, it also can control the muscular activity directly through reticulospinal tract to lower motor neurons and indirectly by influencing the activities of cerebellum, red nucleus, substantia nigra, copper stratum, and also the cerebral cortex. Reticular formation also can control the receptivity of sensory and organ. 
and threshold of the central sensory pathways. I think you have learned in your uh, last week with Associate Professor Dr. Mizatu. And it also can regulate the endocrine, visceral, and emotional function through its connection with hypothalamus and limbic lobe. So I can say that uh, reticular, formulation, uh, reticular formations can be divided into two systems. Okay, the first system is the ascending reticular activated system and the second system which is the descending reticular system. Okay, what are the differences between the ascending reticular activated system with the descending part? So this ascending reticular system contains of the rostral part begin with at the level of upper cons and the brain up to cerebral cortex. So all the neurotransmitters that project to the cerebral cortex either directly or by relay in the thalamus. So it can cause alertness, faithfulness, maintenance of attention, emotional reactions, as well as your learning processes. Meanwhile, for the descending reticular system, which is the caudal part, we start with the vaguely the lower points on, and also the medullar part, projection toward to, the, to your spinal cord. So the function will involve the motor functions, or your respirations as well as the regulation of the blood pressure. So here is your cross-sectional image of the reticular formation. Basically, all these reticular nuclei in your brainstem are arranged into three columns, which are the black color, the peach color, as well as the blue color. The black color column are known as rough nuclei, or also can be known as median column. The peach color was the uh, medial column and the blue color here represent the lateral column. Okay, let's discuss this black color or the median column lies in the midline and consists of intermediate sized neurons. So the nuclei of this column are termed rough nuclei. So as I mentioned previously, rough nuclei or RN responsible to secrete your serotonergic neurons. The medial column or the pitch color here consists of nuclei which are made up large sized neurons. This is why we call it as a magnocellular. So this column, this column contains a gigantocellular nucleus, pontine tegmental reticular nucleus or known as the PTN, as well as the ventral reticular nucleus. And the last column, which is the lateral column, consists of nuclei which are made up of small neurons. That is why we known as a parvocellular column. So parvus means little or small that extend this column extend from the medulla to the midbrain. Uh, this lateral reticular formation receives information from SND tract for touch and pain, as well as other sensory information via respective trap and bundle as stated here. So in this slide, we will discuss how the reticular formations can regulate your respiratory. So this respiratory center is composed of several groups of neurons that located bilaterally in the medulla oblongata, as well as the pons of your brain stems. So it can be divided into dorsal respiratory group. This dorsal respiratory group is responsible to control the inspirations. The other nuclei is the ventral respiratory group that control both inspiratory and expiratory neurons. And in the pons, you can see there is the pneumotoxic center or known as pacemaker cells of the medulla which is the main location of the rhythmic pattern that generate the circuitry involved in your breathing. Don't forget this amniotic center. This amniotic center are con that one that control the intensity of the breathing. So not only that, uh, there are also cardiovascular center that located in your brain stems that affect changes to your heart rate, cardiac output, as well as your blood pressure. So this center receives information from baroreceptors in carotid sinus as well as the arc of iota. So not only that, not stated in this picture, they also receive information from the chemoreceptors that monitor the acidity of the blood. So it's sending the impulse to the SN node as well as the AV node via this sympathetic 
which is the cardiac accelerator nerve to accelerate your heart rate as well as your blood pressure too. So this center also functions as cardio inhibitory center which causes slower and less from cardiac muscle contraction through the activation of parasympathetic fibers which is the vagus nerve. So nevertheless, this cardiovascular center also increases the stroke volume of the heart as well as the as well as the vasoconstriction via activation of the vasomotor nerve that which indirectly or directly which regulate the cardiac output as well as the blood pressure too. So uh, this is the this slide is the most important part of the lecture. So the reticular formation may be best known for its role in promoting arousal and consciousness. So this function is mediated by the activating ascending reticular activating system or known as ARAS. So the reticular activating system contains circuits that originate in several areas of the brain, including the midbrain reticular formation and access to the cerebral cortex as well as the thalamus. So these pathways are predominantly associated with neurotransmitters known as acetylcholine and norepinephrine. So this acetylcholine and norepinephrine play important roles in regulating your arousal and wakefulness. The cholinergic neurons, they originate in the pedicular pantan nucleus as well as the lateral dorsal tegmental nucleus or known as LTN. Meanwhile, the noradrenergic neurons originate in the locus coronus. The fibers that arise from these locations combine with other pathways that extend to the cerebral cortex and thalamus to promote the wakefulness, vigilance and overall arousal. So this pathway from the reticular formations must be functional for normal attention abilities and for your sleep rate cycles. So this reticular activating system or ARAS active during wakefulness and inactive during your sleep. The neurochemicals such as GABA, gamma aminobutyric acid and melatonin play important roles in depriving the reticular formation activity which will cause sleepy and drowsiness to us. So please take note, the damage of this reticular activating system in the core of the brain stems lead to progressive loss of consciousness followed by stupor, coma and can cause death.